uh, Darko, uh, we are happy to have you here. Uh, Darko just returned from Dubrovnik, where he was uh, one of the artists in the program Open Studios. He was using a um, souvenir shop, uh, Desha Pro, uh, which is um, uh, based in Lazaretti in Dubrovnik. And he used it uh, for a couple of days uh, at his studio, which, where he was working on his project. So uh, tonight uh, we uh, wanted to talk with uh, you about that project, but not also that one, uh, about your practice in general. And uh, we want to do this um, less formally <laughs> as usual. And uh, so we invite everyone uh, here who is present, also people on Zoom and Facebook to join us with your questions, comments. You can uh, feel free to write in chat or um, on Facebook in a comment. We have uh, our colleague Marina here who is going to read that. So um, yes, good evening once again. <laughs> good evening, thank you for having me. Uh, yeah, uh, we imagine this, uh, since we are also physically here in uh, Crosstor, to actually um, start not from the project uh, on which you have been working, yes. uh, but also to give a little bit context about your practice. Yeah. So uh, I will let you start and uh, we have also some visual material presentation, so yeah. yeah. perfect. <laughs> I mean, uh, to just kind of uh, give a little bit of uh, context of uh, what I will be showing now. Uh, these are like, uh, uh, I mean, the, the work that I did in Dubrovnik, which is a project that I'm doing for like uh, more than half a year uh, now. And then, uh, but I would also like to kind of uh, uh, show my practice and projects with, which were like leading up to uh, to what I'm actually doing now. Uh, so the first work that I'm showing uh, is titled Growing, which was a project from 2016. It was my first uh, artist book. It was the first like experience with uh, this kind of uh, uh, a really specific uh, artistic uh, medium, uh, which was uh, produced published uh, and edited by Private Print Studio from Skopje, uh, which are actually, I, I would like to also mention that they are like the first uh, Macedonian artist book publishers. Uh, so yeah, like uh, they have a studio and like ongoing program uh, with working with, uh, uh, working with young artists, uh, uh, especially like uh, regarding uh, the artistic, uh, the artist book as a, as a medium. Uh, so this collaboration, uh, I mean, I was invited back in 2016 uh, to kind of uh, propose uh, a project or a series of works which would be uh, kind of easily translated into, into a book or a publication. Uh, it was a, a project which I developed over uh, a few months and it was uh, inspired by uh, plants and uh, different kind of like uh, plants and trees and flowers from uh, uh, from my garden or from my from yeah from my parents' house garden. Uh, so this was like uh, I mean uh, yeah it was uh, it was uh, research into. Uh, into some kind of uh, memory. It was a research into how, uh, how, how I was like responding to this kind of uh, uh, natural or uh, kind of uh, uh, setting, which was, I don't know which one, it was like uh, uh, close to home, but it was also like uh, felt very nature-like or, or if I can, if I can say so. Uh, the other thing which was uh, quite surprising, actually, working with uh, with uh, with an artist book was the uh, uh, kind of aspect of participation, which was not maybe which is not maybe uh, so much present in uh, like the, the the regular kind of visual arts. 
So the participatory aspect here was like that uh, uh, when you turn the pages from the book, the, the plants and the trees are actually growing from page to page, which was something that really stuck with me. Uh, and yeah, it was like a first, my first introduction into like a seriously like printed, uh, I mean, not seriously printed, but like a project that was developed specifically for this kind of uh, printed mm -hmm. yeah. media. And uh, before that, uh, in which medium did you work and uh, did you work on something similar? So, yeah, I mean, uh, I graduated from Faculty of Fine Arts in 2011, and ever since I kind of uh, get really easily bored with mediums. So I was kind, I was a kind of like uh, all over the place medium wise. So I was working, I don't know, at one point I was working with uh, performative works. At another point I was working with like uh, ready made and ready found objects. Like I was, I always had this, uh, uh, this uh, general idea that uh, in my works, I was inspired by either by my immediate surrounding, either by my city or like my family history. So this was like a, a, an ongoing theme, like how am I responding to my art or to my practice uh, uh, concerning or regarding this, uh, this kind of uh, topics. Um, so yeah, I mean, uh, the, the book was, actually yeah kind of uh, a medium which was for the first time felt i wouldn't say natural but felt really convenient for what i was doing uh, before that i was like okay let's try some of this and let's try some of that but it never really stuck with me it always kind of it felt really kind of I wasn't controlling the medium or I wasn't controlling what, what I was putting out. Uh, so yeah, uh, this kind of like uh, the, the publication or the artistic, the artist book uh, uh, also had this uh, immediacy, which I, which I always uh, want my works to have uh, with the audience, this kind of very like close relation. So the other stuff, which I did before 2016 kind of felt really uh, distanced or sometimes some like really, yeah. Like, Not so I natural mean, maybe to, to you or? Yeah, it's, I mean, uh, it was, uh, it was distinct. Uh, I was seeing like during exhibition openings, like when I would exhibit the work that then the, the audience doesn't have, I mean, uh, they, they had some kind of response to the work because I was actually like also working with participatory practices before 2016. So, but there was always like this uh, distance, which I didn't like, or there were like bridges that need, needed to be crossed like yeah. from the, from the audience. So, and I, and I never wanted to be like too much instructive in my, in my works. So, yeah. So you stuck with it with the medium since then, more or less. Yeah, more or less. It yeah. was like uh, it, it 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 stuck with me like uh, this this idea to have uh, to have an artwork or to present an artwork in the form of a book mm -hmm. rather than uh, I don't know like a regular exhibition or screening or something. The other work uh, titled "Never Not in Love." Uh, which was first exhibited and produced uh, in 2019, uh, also in uh, in private studio in Skopje, uh, and then later it was exhibited last year at the uh, Biennial for Young Artists uh, at the Museum of Contemporary Art in Skopje. And so this was the work. Uh, actually, it's uh, composed of uh, two separate uh, uh, series of works. Uh, one of the series, which is shown here in the photo, are these um, uh, seven love letters, which were typewritten. I mean, they were like 
they were part of my uh, graduation project for for my master studies. Uh, so uh, again, I, I mean, I, I didn't like uh, in this project. I, I wasn't so much interested in uh, in like the publication or the book medium, but I was actually more interested in the in writing, mm -hmm. so in the text. And yeah, these were like uh, a seven letters which were dedicated to people that I have fallen in love with, but never addressed and never like, they don't have any names, so they, they are left blank or I don't know how to say it. Like um, uh, with, with the letters, I was also once again uh, uh, trying to kind of include this participatory aspect of, of the work or somehow open the, the work to the uh, to the audience. So the audience is actually invited to kind of open the, the letters and read them. And then the other series, uh, which is uh, behind the letters on, on the walls, uh, which is titled Waves, uh, is actually, I mean, the, the, the whole setting or the whole, uh, uh, the whole exhibition is inspired by uh, uh, by a couple of works by Vermeer because I have read somewhere, I mean, like researching the, uh, the genre painting from the 17th century, especially uh, the Dutch painting from the 17th century. I found out that uh, usually because this is a very common subject like uh, people reading letters or people sending or writing letters. But we actually, because it's like, a, I mean, it's like a, a realistic painting. And then uh, we, as the audience or as the viewer, we never know what the, what the letter contains or what the writing is, is about. So artists, especially like uh, Vermeer, uh, always included hints in, in their painting or in the background. Uh, as a way to kind of uh, uh, symbolize or kind of associate the the theme or the topic of the of the letter, so a commonplace uh, uh, motif or subject to to put uh, uh, somewhere around the the, the painting was uh, a scene uh, a seascape, something which involved like the sea or boats or fishing or I don't know. Uh, and depending on the scene, like if there there was this like a uh, violent or turbulent I don't know sea storm or something in the uh, somewhere in the background, like hidden in the background, then it would be by by the the seventeenth century Dutch audience, it would be interpreted as this kind of turbulent laugh or maybe forbidden laugh or something. Uh, so putting the, the 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 letters in a context like this, in, in this setting, like surrounded by uh, these are all like upwards of five hundred uh, uh, images, like repeated. It, it, it is actually the same image, but repeated for over uh, five hundred times. Uh, then the viewer would kind of maybe get the get. A sort of a sense of what the letters are about, you know. But it is, yeah, it, it is very open in that it's not so much like uh, reprodu reproducing or re replicating uh, Vermeer's method or kind of replicating uh, the genre painting, but actually it is a kind of uh, a work that should maybe, I don't know, like immerse. The, the audience or kind of put them in a in a different chamber or a different room or how uh, how would this uh, repeated wave over and over would uh, actually influence the, the the reading of the of the letters so uh, like not not really contrary, but uh, quite different from the previous work from growing. Uh, the the thing or the aspect that uh, 
kind of stuck with me when I was uh, working uh, uh, and exhibiting this project was uh, the aspect of repetition, like something which can be quite easily with like a, an office printer and a really like cheap paper we repeat it over and over again, like in, I don't know, like endlessly. And then uh, that was the uh, one of one of its aspects, and then the other aspect was the the writings, mm -hmm. something which was which I always like kind of not opposed, but I think I was too afraid of to kind of explore in my practice because uh, writing and visual art always I mean they don't always go together, but I was I, I not that I just was, but I actually still am kind of uh, quite. Uh, scared that uh, people would want to see me as a writer, maybe, or a poet, which is something I don't associate with. Uh, so yeah, I mean, kind of these aspects of like uh, the medium of the book, and then the repetition, and then the, the writing kind of stuck with me to to develop the the, the most the most recent works. Yeah, but in this sense, did you notice that your writing, I wouldn't say skills, but expression kind of evolved throughout this project in years. Like, uh, did you see any uh, change in the way in which, in which you express yourself in your writing? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> like, I think uh, if I, because I haven't read the, the letters actually in like quite a long time, I think I'm afraid to actually go through them and read them, the, read them because I think I will edit them mm -hmm. or write them again. Yeah. But yeah, it for sure change. I mean, the most important change at the beginning, like since I started uh, working with writing or with text, like explicitly in my in my works, was uh, the attention I started paying to literature and how I read how I read things like. And I always like I have this sense uh, like bef like before I I, I started like uh, experimenting or researching with, with with writing I was kind of I was uh, like when I was reading a book I was always concerned with like the the narrative or like the overall structure like what is the what is the overall structure of of the book that I'm reading but actually like. As, as much as I was going into writing like closer and closer, I think uh, I was much more concerned like uh, who is the voice that is saying this? What, is, what, or what kind of voice is saying this? Like, you know, you, when I read something like, I always wonder like, is this the author? Is this some what kind of imagined or fi fictive like narr narrator? Is it uh, like a, 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 a person or a character from the from the book, which is quite also important for for me. I think I will get back to it uh, later. Yeah. So the other thing which came later, I mean, I'm, I'm now starting with like the like the theory uh, part of the of the project that I'm working on. At the moment, so uh, I would like to just uh, quickly shout out to uh, Slavče Dimitrov, which is who is a, a curator and theorist from Macedonia, from Skopje, uh, for for suggesting uh, Jose Esteban Munoz theory in regards to to my work, and also a shout out to Tonchi from Split <laughs> for <laughs> suggesting Toby Preciado. <laughs> Uh, I mean, theory for me is always, is not something that comes later, like when I'm working mm -hmm. or researching. It's not something that comes before the work, but it's usually something In the which process. I, yeah, which I sometimes find, sometimes stumble upon, sometimes read somewhere, sometimes mm -hmm. I hear it from someone. Uh, so these are like two concepts that are like uh, uh, specifically important for what I do at the moment. The first one is the landscapes of astonishment. Uh, it is a concept by uh, proposed by Jose Esteban Munoz as a way to 
um, I mean, he has this uh, idea of uh, abstract and concrete utopias, like a kind of escapism from the here and now. And is a, this is a concept I really started to, to work with uh, since the beginning of the pandemic, like during the lockdown and like, how are we like daydreaming or how are we, how can we use our imagination to kind of uh, imagine uh, a place beyond the here and the here and now. And the other one, the, the agoraphilia proposed by Paul Di Preciado is actually uh, a term like when I read it, I felt like, why haven't I found this like earlier? This is something like really, uh, 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 really close to, to what I do or what I feel or what I, what I have felt like, like in specific uh, points in time. Uh, and it actually describes this uh, kind of uh, uh, feelings of falling in love with a city or, or a place. And this was, uh, this was something also that I like, uh, really connected to like this is you know uh falling in love with a city is like a also relevant kind of falling in love it doesn't have to be a person it doesn't have to be like um yeah in a sense also this uh, uh concept of agoraphilia kind of anthropomorphizes the, the city or a place in which it gives it more kind of human characteristics, if I can say. So, yeah. But it's not, it is not noticeable that you like um, focus on love in, like love is something, maybe not intentionally, but it is something that kind of like goes through your works in some one way or another. Yeah. Would you agree with that? Yeah, <laughs> I would agree with that. <laughs> Because, I mean, there has to be some kind of aspect of love or loving something mm -hmm. in order to kind of engage with or in order to, for me to be interested uh, to maybe like uh, explore some more or research into. So there, there has to be some kind of, mm -hmm. of uh, let's say, falling in love. Yeah. You know, like, um, so out of these two concepts, the works that I'm now showing, uh, this was, uh, so this is a, this is Places for Daydreaming. I mean, it's, it's a project that which started uh, uh, at, uh, in 2020, like at the peak of the pandemic, at the start of the pandemic. And actually, I also wrote here like 2020, 2021, but it's actually an ongoing project. Mm -hmm. And it was developed during this digital residency program at the social cultural space Center Yadro in Skopje. Uh, so during the, the first months of the pandemic, I had like a really bad creative block like I felt really stuck, like so super uninspired, didn't know what to do, if I wanted to do art anymore, etc. And then uh, Center Yadro invited me for this digital residency, which was like a, a social media takeover. So they were like, okay, we will give you, I mean, a lot of programs were happening. Yeah. Like, this was not something uh, like uh, mm -hmm. out of the blue or, um, they, they, they gave me the, the social media uh, platforms for me to use like in whichever way I wanted for a week. And I was thinking about like, okay, how to use this medium, like I don't know, going live or something. I, I had this uh, like ton, tons of ideas. And then, uh, 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 an idea which really stuck with me was uh, okay, like uh, we cannot travel at the moment, but we can like think about or remember places that we used to visit or when. 
like either going on vacation or professionally or whatever, but uh, it was a project, I mean, uh, which was developed out of the uh, idea of how do we remember the, the places like the places where where we used to live or the places there and, and actually not not so much the places but actually what are the stories that we are connecting to the uh to the places that, that's why i titled it like places for daydreaming because uh they have i mean for me at least the the, the memories have this kind of uh, daydream quality about them so it was like, yeah, I mean, it was like a, a, a healthy coping mechanism to kind of escape the, the reality of the, uh, of the pandemic. But uh, it first started like, like with uh, seven different cities or places that I visited or, or where I lived in the past. And uh, for, for this whole week during this uh, like uh, digital residency program, I produced works, uh, visual works and writings, which I published like every day. And every day was dedicated to, to another to another city. And at first they were like, I, I always like uh, uh, disclosed the, uh, the place, the place which, is, which is inspiring this kind of current, uh, Works, but afterwards I found out that it can be too kind of narrowing or too kind of imposing uh, to actually see an image and think, oh, this is like Vienna, Austria. Or uh, so later I kind of uh, erased the names of the city. So it's like there is only the story of the city and there are the images of the city. So the audience can once again <laughs> participate and maybe kind of imagine their own place or maybe have some similar memories and yeah i mean the works include like various objects pieces of architecture some are quite abstract some are quite i don't know realistic maybe and how is different for you i mean uh, as you said, you also found find a way uh, to engage uh, the audience. But how was different for you um, to have to work in a digital medium versus when you said that you like you have this printed version yeah. and that you can touch, open, engage? Yeah, it was it was a challenge, I think, to kind of make this quite tangible works, work with different materials and then try to kind of represent them through a digital medium. It always felt like there was something lacking or there was something missing from, from, the, from the pieces. But yeah, I mean, those were the conditions of the, at the moment. And I'm really quite of, uh, I mean, I, I really like exhibiting these works like in, in person, like, uh, so after after the digital residency, then I was invited in Linz in Austria for a, a, a physical residency <laughs> last year for a month. So I decided to continue this project and see how it would develop in an actual while well, living in an actual city. And it was quite interesting because um, the city was too great of an influence to to escape, you know. So I was like, I like before I went to Linz, I had this idea, oh, I'll, I will just be in Linz and I will think about all the places like from the past or memories or something. But actually Linz was like, yeah. no, you are dealing with this. <laughs> and yeah, it felt, uh, I, I kind of had to develop a different methodology for working. So I had this, uh, the, the first rule was that, uh, because I, I, I usually don't uh, work from uh, photography, like, I mean, specifically for this work, it has to be like from memory. Uh, but then when I was like taking pictures of, I don't know, details around the city, corners, the river, etc. 
I, I had this rule like if I take a picture of a place, then I don't include it in my mm -hmm. in my work because the taking taking the picture takes away something from the from the experience. So actually, for a month, I was kind of going around the city, like doing the same routes around the city and trying to memorize as many places as, as I can, and then going back to the studio and reworking them. And yeah, it was. Uh, it it was it was challenging, but at the same time, like I, I always had this uh, thing in mind, like uh, how would people react to this, like when they see it in person, you know, outside of Instagram and outside of Facebook, and um, yeah, I mean they they are quite small formats, so they are more like intimate. People have to go like closer to see them in person. So I also like this 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 aspect of, of the work. And yeah, maybe, I mean, uh, as I said, it, it is ongoing, so I'm looking forward to <laughs> the next city where, where this will uh, probably continue. So. so do you use uh, this method in all the cities that you visit, regardless of being on residence or not? I mean, now we are in a specific situation where I guess we don't travel that yeah. much, uh, but uh, how did that influence? You, like, uh, yeah, it's like you're touristic. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I cannot, I can, I cannot really escape the the tourist yeah. <laughs> in uh, while traveling. So there is always this aspect of kind of touristic fascination yeah. from all the famous mm -hmm. sites that you have to visit in a place and take a picture but, and take a picture. Yeah, yeah. It's always this kind of. I mean, it's it's like. Sometimes for me, I feel it's like a self-imposed pressure mm -hmm. to oh, like you, you know, you are here in Dubrovnik, like yeah. take this picture, <laughs> like. Uh, but um, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, it, it depends on the city and depends on the on the context. Yeah, I mean, it is very interesting because uh, I actually had uh, this conversation with colleague uh, Christina when uh, we were uh, traveling a few months ago for a project. And uh, we were in Athens and mm -hmm. taking, of course, these pictures, you know. And uh, then we had this conversation about, you know, why are we just <laughs> enjoying this? Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and, and then we kind of like started to think about how also like um, uh, it's 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 not I, I cannot really well explain it, but uh, how also our mind actually changes and how uh, our memory structures is changing yeah. because it's as if we can only memorize it through this moment of taking a picture or through uh, an objective it's so weird like and when we because i i mean we are both the same generation so yeah. when we travel i don't know like when we we're kids and so we don't have that many pictures and uh, our memories are constructed in a completely different way. So uh, I find it super interesting that you're using that uh, sort of like a method uh, as in your approach. I mean, I yeah, I approach, mean, let's yeah, say. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, it's, uh, it's important for me to, to employ some kind of uh, methodology to what I'm uh, dealing with at the moment. Otherwise, it would be real life or every yeah. life it wouldn't be an art project yeah and i always have this uh, this feeling of uh, 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 quite similar to, to what you mentioned uh, like i'm taking a picture of something and then at the same at the same time i'm like okay how am i going to remember this yeah. Yeah. like how will this be remembered you know and I because today it's actually uh, i mean we, we rarely look at those pictures and yeah. Afterwards. So that's super interesting. Yeah. yeah, you take the picture and then. Yeah. Actually, I was uh, recently inspired by by a friend of mine. Uh, a shout out to Ivana Spiroska. <laughs> uh, uh, she was like uh, a couple of months ago. She started doing analog photography, which was, I mean, I always had this kind of. Uh, I was always kind of romanticizing, like working with film, mm -hmm. working with analog technology, something which is forgotten. And it has this very, very pleasing aesthetic aspect about it. Uh, and I actually found like three cameras at home. One of them was working. I was like, okay, let's put film and see what comes out. 
and it's a totally different experience. I mean, it's not, I don't do it like for an art project. It's not like, oh, I'm taking pictures and then I will do an art project out of this, but it's, it is, I use it as a tool for, uh, for uh, a kind of maybe different perception to everyday life. And actually used it uh, now when I was in Dubrovnik. Uh, I mean, not, not in relation to the project, but in relation to my touristic yeah. <laughs> kind of uh, going around the, the city because with the phone, I take like hundreds of pictures or a single mm -hmm. place. And then I take the, 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 the camera with 36 images, this kind of limited, very limited yeah. medium. And then it's a different way of thinking mm -hmm. completely. Like. What would you select uh, like like you, for this process? Yeah, 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 yeah. What is most important to me? At like, the, yeah, do I want to have this? Yeah. Like, <laughs> I have this really limited number of uh, of, of, uh, of film and frames, and do I really want to take a picture of this? Or, yeah. <laughs> and it, it, again, it's like, how will I remember this? But it's always the, at least for me now with analog photography, it's always like, I think I will remember it better if I do it in, in analog mm -hmm. uh, photography rather than digital because the phone is like you take the picture and then you forget about it. But with with uh, shooting on film, it's like has this process afterwards. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like you develop the film, yeah. you you know you bring the pictures, you have them physically, and I, I don't know how it will turn out. Yeah. <laughs> We'll see. Maybe so, at some point you will start to yeah. <laughs> use Maybe at some point way. I will include it yeah, as, yeah. A, as an additional medium to, to the whole series yeah. of works. So, uh, places for daydreaming happened, the, the digital version, and then Center um, Yadro, the social cultural space. Uh, actually, the program coordinator invited me to uh, kind of like, okay, we have this material from a week. It's a lot of pictures, a lot of text. Like, let's select them, edit them, and make a publication, like an artist book out of it. And uh, yeah, this was also like a, a, a kind of a, a small nightmare, like what to do with this? Like, do I want to... I mean, uh, this was the the idea when I kind of connected the, I wanted to make that uh, trans translation from a digital medium into a printing medium again. So it felt kind of really appropriate and convenient for me. Because otherwise, if the book didn't happen, it would, it would have meant that uh, the images would be on Instagram, stuck in <laughs> some archive. <laughs> Uh, from a year ago, and nobody will remember them, and blah blah blah. So the idea to to translate the, the works into a book uh, was really kind of, uh, uh, I mean, even fascinating at the moment. Even if I was like a bit kind of anxious about it, like how will this translate? Uh, I also had a lot of uh, a lot of uh, doubts and thoughts about uh, the title of the book, which is something I I try not to think about until the end of the project. I mean, it's usually like this with even with the exhibitions that I'm doing. Like I leave the or or I don't leave. I postpone the the title until the very end, or at least as I as I can go. And this was really, I mean, I had this, all these kind of poetic titles and quotes from, I don't know, from artists and poets and whatnot. And at the end, I kind of uh, decided to go with a small book for daydreaming. Because it was like, <laughs> what is this book representing? And it was actually a, a small book for, for daydreaming. So it was really kind of, uh, maybe descriptive in a way, but not too revealing, which was uh, because there are a lot of aspects uh, of uh, uh, within the within the research, within the writing. So I didn't want to kind of uh, 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 emphasize one of them. So yeah, 
a small bit for daydreaming ones. And daydreaming is uh, maybe wide enough concept. It's, yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's like an um, umbrella term yeah. then that you can like uh, uh, mm -hmm. uh, place or associate uh, many different things with with it, with within this framework. So um, yeah, this was like the, the small book for daydreaming, which was actually uh, uh, done and produced before I went to to Linz. Mm -hmm. So it includes only a selection of uh, of the first kind of, of first the first series of works. But then, I mean, uh, during the digital residency, like I produced maybe twice as more than I showed online. And then for the book, I took uh, like I extended the the selection. Mm -hmm. I think this was really important to. Uh, I mean, the, the structure was more or less the same, like the, uh, the places uh, are in, in an order which was also done on like uh, during the residency. Within the book is structured in like seven, seven parts without any kind of, uh, you don't have any like uh, uh, a border between two, so you don't know when uh, the daydreaming about one place ends and when the other one begins. So it's kind of intertwined, but it's kind of like uh, similar. It has a structure to it. Uh, and it was different to, I mean, it was important to include, uh, uh, to extend the, the selection because I wanted to uh, to have actually more, more of the works shown within the book, uh, which didn't make the, which didn't make the cut. In the, uh, during the, the, the digital residency. Um, yeah, and the other thing which uh, really kind of, uh, which I really took out from, from this project was uh, uh, how long does it take to publish a book, <laughs> even if it's like uh, an artistic book something which can be quite like open-ended or something really forgiving, but yeah, it took like months of preparation, talking with the editor, like selecting things, um, like taking out things, putting things back in, and then talking to the, uh, uh, to the printer, and then making like, all these kind of uh, small like, I mean, small. Uh, they don't seem. Sm they, they they are small, but in the uh, in the context of the whole project, they are really important decisions. So it has like this kind of pressure because uh, if I make some kind of mistake, it's yeah, it is done. <laughs> I just done in the it's in the book and that's it. So out of this experience. Uh, yeah. You started to think about self-publishing. Self-publishing. I, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I had this idea of like uh, because the let's say the project or the research around places for day for daydreaming kind of uh, happens a lot faster than than uh, it is actually able to be placed or printed in a book. So I had this idea of like, okay, what if I print the book? Or what if I have this um, a timeline or a structure where I regularly produce a material to be published in a printed form? And quite conveniently, out of a small book for daydreaming, <laughs> a small handbook for daydreaming was born. Uh, the initial idea for this, I mean, it's all like all of these are like like extensions to the to the project, to the initial project. So uh, the first idea of a small handbook for daydreaming was to do um, a travel guide. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was like, I had this idea of like, okay, I have a story, I will just write the story or like draw some images from memory 
and put, put them in like a small publication and then hand it out to people or distribute it like uh, uh, in a non-commercial way. And then people can like go to the city and go to the place and maybe like get inspired or, or see if, if their experience is any similar or dissimilar to, uh, to mine. And uh, yeah, but uh, travel guide felt, um, I don't know, uh, felt to also kind of too narrow as a title because it, it was always, travel guide is always like connected to traveling, like, but people don't always have means to, to travel. And this was also like uh, the, the idea was also developed uh, during, at the end of uh, the summer 2021. So it was a bit still like, are we traveling? Are we not traveling? Like, what are the restrictions? So handbook felt like a more general term, or not not so not something so specific, like connected to 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 traveling. Yeah. Um, and so uh, this was the project that you actually was working on in Dubrovnik. Yeah. Here are some images from Dubrovnik. So we, yeah. We also have the printed ones here. So yeah, if anyone wants to. You can check it. Yeah. Uh, and they will stay in Prosper as yeah. well. So yeah. uh, there will be available uh, here if everyone wants to see them. Um, yeah, so how did this process go in Dubrovnik? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because you had uh, an unusual studio there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so, I mean, uh, uh, the whole project or this series of, of uh, works of small publications, I mean, it was never, I never intended it, intended it to kind of uh, be something that I would sell or something which would be, which would have this kind of uh, commercial logic to it. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's like a a, a, a print on demand uh, publication. So, I because the material is so cheap, like I can. I can like if there is interest, I can print more and more uh, uh, from the same from the same book. And then the, the the initial idea was that I would do maybe ten or fifteen like uh, uh, books, like uh, what do you say in, in English? Like we we, we say tirage like Macedonia. Ah, yeah. Uh... Print run, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the print run. This is also tirage or not? Yeah. So. <laughs> so the print run for every for every issue was like uh, ten or fifteen, which was super limited. But then the decision was to hand them out to close friends, mm -hmm. which is, I mean, even the uh, the format is uh, this pocket size format, which I can. Uh, which means that I can have them with me like all the time and then hand them out to, uh, to people. And uh, yeah, I mean, the, the whole project, the, the whole work has this kind of uh, quite informal aspect to it, but then it also kind of uh, uh, doesn't, doesn't rely on this kind of more serious production logic, which involves Editors, designers, I don't know, printing houses, etc. So it's quite immediate, and this is what uh, this is what actually I was like. Uh, uh, I, I actually wanted to work with this kind of medium, which, which is something really immediate. And in uh, at, at the beginning, I was like, I I, I mean I. Again, back to the methodology, the, the method for working uh, with this work was like, okay, I, I can produce one like whenever I feel like it, but then because I get bored or distracted so easily, I might do one and then forget about it. 
And uh, the rule I said to myself was, uh, let's try and do uh, one uh, for a month. So each month there is like a new, a new issue. Uh, it also has this kind of really important uh, collaborative aspect to it. So the, the issues number four and five are actually done with, in collaboration with, uh, with uh, old friends, uh, also visual artists. And yeah, I mean, uh, I, I don't have like an open call for, yeah. <laughs> for artists usually by, I mean, I usually would like to work with, uh, uh, with the people I usually, I mean, with the artists who are, you know, also friends yeah. and who I, uh, uh, see and communicate with all the time. Uh, yeah, and then for for Dubrovnik, I was I had this idea of like what I would want to do in the, in the city, and then I mean this was quite quite like I felt really natural and felt really kind of mm -hmm. appropriate because yeah, it was like a small. It was like a small residency, and then, but the, the handbook is, is also uh, uh, a work which I can produce over a, a shorter period of, mm -hmm. of time. So did it happen, uh, I mean, you went there uh, with this project in mind, and we discussed about it beforehand, yeah. and you already knew what you will be doing. But uh, regarding the content, uh, how did uh, your this super short stay, actually you were only four days, did it have an impact? I mean, and in this sense, uh, it kind of shifted your uh, initial, initial idea. Or maybe also, sorry, the production uh, conditions. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, the production conditions were actually better than that one than what I had before because for the first time I had the printer right next to my computer <laughs> so it was quite convenient to kind of play with the printer and yeah. then try out different things and different uh, colors and types of paper um, regarding the content yeah as I, as I said you know with uh, 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 back with with the residency in Linz so for example when I'm at home and when I try to do uh, like a, a handbook uh, uh, with some sort of memory or a story from a, a place from the from the past, it always has this kind of constructed narrative, mm -hmm. something which I revise, something which I change, maybe a little bit, add to it, or take out something from it. But being I, I would say like this is like uh, uh, the first in the in the series of works which is quite site specific mm -hmm. because the the content is really inspired by the the city and then again it was also done actually while I was in the in the city. so it's not something which I would do uh, afterward mm -hmm. um, yeah so it inspired the the content in in this sense and. Uh, because of the because the stay was like only four days long, I had like I had some like uh, preconceived notions of what I would like to do, but also I like to keep myself myself uh, or my thought process quite uh, quite flexible in order to get inspired by, by the city yeah. or. And it was also we didn't mention, but it was your first time in Dubrovnik. Yeah, it was. So that was yeah. also important. <laughs> It had like a, maybe like an added uh, a little bit of pressure like yeah. to to have this kind of uh, specific or super kind of uh, experience in the drone. Mm -hmm. But yeah, in the end, I kind of settled for a thing which is in the city, but which I found out is quite invisible to the to the residents, mm -hmm. local residents. And yeah, it was like, uh, they're actually, uh, I mean, uh, at first I was not going to include any kind of text because I was like, okay, this is like, this will be like a visual story. And actually I was inspired by the palm trees in Dubrovnik, something which is not, uh, like we don't hear it in Macedonia or in Velas or Ali. And yeah, I was like, 
repetitively, repetitively seeing these trees on the way from my apartment to the studio. And it was something like, okay, this is like, this has like a real nice actual, I mean, visual quality to it. Like, let's do something to do with this. So, okay, I knew this was like going to be uh, a series of works that would be included in the in the hidden book from here. And I, I actually started doing these drawings first from photography and then uh, actually from memory, like how I would remember the palm trees, these specific palm trees. And then on the first day, uh, I talked to Ivona Vasic mm -hmm. and she told me actually the, the story, which later, uh, many other artists and residents from Dubrovnik told me about uh, uh, this uh, thing that happens in, in Dubrovnik or happened in recent history that the palm trees were actually disappearing mm -hmm. or kind of, I mean, because they were infected with some kind of bug, so people had like really kind of uh, hard time trying to maintain them. So I was like, oh my God, you have so many palm trees here in Dubrovnik and they're like, nowhere, actually <laughs> there aren't <laughs> so much and like there were more. And this was really like um, inspiring as a, as a story. And I was like, okay, let's work with this. And then as I, as I mentioned, I wasn't going to include a text in it, but there was a place like even in the, uh, even in the handbook, I don't, uh, mention it uh, even in the in the handbook. I don't mention like where where this place is. It's somewhere <laughs> in Dubrovnik, but it was like it was so inspiring uh, at, at the same time, like so uh, hidden from plain plain sight. I would say that I was like, okay. And I actually didn't take any photos of it because I was like, okay, I don't want to take photos from this. Like, I just want to remember it. And then I, wa I want to write a short text about how I remember it and how one can only imagine the place or only see the, see the place. But it was also kind of connected to the, this story or, or narrative around the palm trees. Yeah. And you do you do them uh, bilingually? Yeah, in, yeah, in, yeah. In both languages. Yeah, it's. Uh, I think. I mean, it's it's quite practical because it saves a lot of paper. I think otherwise I have yeah, to do yeah. like. But do you version. do you write in English or like is it your first uh, expression in English or mm. your native language or? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I have. I have struggles with this, yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, I at first I usually start writing in English, but this can, this has a really like a strong reason why I write why I do that because I usually read in English. Mm -hmm. So I mean, not like read Facebook and internet, but like read literature, yeah. the literature that I that I read is usually in English, so kind of, I don't know, like my thinking process uh, specifically for this project, like switches immediately to, to English. Yes, yeah. I don't know why it happens, but I actually, I also don't fight it, so. Yeah, I think a lot of us can relate uh, in that sense if we are working with so much in this language and uh, yeah, some things yeah. we find that we can express maybe better, better. <laughs> in, yeah, the, yeah. in the vocabulary <laughs> that we are. Uh, used to. Uh, I wanted to also ask you about the colors uh, mm -hmm. because uh, also while looking at your previous project, mm -hmm. you can see this sort of like distinctive uh, soft uh, colors, mm -hmm. pastel aesthetics. So uh, is this something that uh, you are like kind of like on purposely do, or how do you how do you what is your relation toward colors? Because here also they are all in different yeah. ones. So um, do you do you kind of like uh, uh, cho choose that in the process, or how does it happen? Um, for for all the previous works, I think uh, choosing the color was really 
kind of a conscious choice, mm-hmm. something which was like maybe revised and I thought about it and changed it in the last minute mm-hmm. or something. Uh, I actually had this like up until maybe the small uh, book for daydreaming. Mm-hmm. And going back to maybe 2018, I would say, I had this kind of weird fascination with like soft pink color. Mm-hmm. So it was like, uh, I mean, it was it was a choice, but it, it wasn't something which I like uh, uh, explicitly explained like in, uh, I don't know, in the, in the text or in the statement mm-hmm. about the, the words. And I informally uh, like, uh, Call all these uh, these different kind of projects the, the pink series of works. Uh, but uh, going back to uh, to the small handbook for daydreaming, uh, I mean, I at first I I knew that I wanted to uh, kind of assign different color to to each issue, mm-hmm. just to kind of maybe visually distinguish the, the issues. But it's not something which is, it, it's not something that I stress about. Mm-hmm. For example, like I, I have this new issue, for example, and then I go to, to the print shop and I just choose <laughs> whatever color they have because it's uh, not that the color is not important, but in a way it's uh, kind of uh, uh, not the primary visual uh, experience of the, yeah. of the book. So I'll also I would contradict myself, like I would maybe uh, talk about the color blue in, in, in some of the texts and then have the, uh, the handbook printed in like, I don't know, yellow, <laughs> for example. Okay, uh, do we have any questions from people here or online? No. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, and Dark, I would like to thank you. Uh, you are staying up for a couple of days more in Split. Uh, you are actually having a workshop uh, with Viran yeah. Uh So uh, maybe you can also just shortly tell us about what you've been working on there and uh, how, how do you uh, engage other people in this participatory process? Yeah. So yeah, going back to this uh, interest in participatory practices, uh, when we first spoke with with Tonchi about, I mean, when he invited me to kind of do do a workshop maybe with uh, with the handbooks, uh, I quite like the idea to kind of maybe uh, uh, I would say liberate the medium or, or open it uh, even more. Uh, so the, the thing that we're actually doing is, uh, I hope the next issue or series of issues of, of the We're handbook. still talking about this. Yeah, 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 yeah. It will be like, I had, I, uh, uh, I was thinking about like, uh, should I do number seven in split and then do the number eight in the Dubrovnik, <laughs> but Dubrovnik came before, before, uh, the workshop here in split and so yeah, it is uh, a workshop based around uh, the handbook, mm-hmm. but we don't have like a, a, a preconceived goal of what we like to achieve. So it, either it will be like a, a collective publication with all the participants, or like each participant will do their own handbook. So I'm looking forward to, to see yeah. how it turns out. Be looking for it as well. Uh, thank you, Darko, and we also like to thank you, uh, our partners uh, at the um, workshop Lazaretti, uh, who also hosted you uh, in Dubrovnik. And um, yes, if you are in Split, uh, you can still come to meet Darko in the following days and also check the uh, small handbooks for uh, daydreaming. Um, so Darko, we wish you um, a pleasant stay here and thank you once again for tonight. Thank you, thank you for hearing me.